this is the rabbit hedgehog and this is going to be a new segment on my channel called chatting with the hog so as many of you know i used to work for harley davidson in the couple of dealerships here in the oklahoma city metro area and at one time i even had a video somewhat similar to what we're about to discuss uh, that was called is harley davidson dying but i was asked politely to remove that even though it was generally positive stating that with the new line and everything coming out then it's not much of an issue and uh well they still thought it as a negative thing so it was removed which was annoying but here we are free from harley davidson and free to talk about our favorite and or unliked american motorcycle company depending on where you sit uh on that side of the fence at any rate as many of you know, if you've watched the news or anything like that, you've seen that Harley Davidson has had a few bad years, these last several years, actually. Uh, they're selling less motorcycles. They're having a hard time keeping their market share. That one time dipped below 50%, which is weird in the U.S. for them. Uh, they did jump back up this last quarter, surprisingly, despite selling less motorcycles, despite definitely not having the profit that they're used to, and despite the other things. So what we're discussing is what is Harley-Davidson doing, if they're bad, if they're good, if they're dying, or what? First off, they're not dying. It's going to take a while for Harley-Davidson to truly die. But there are some things that are going to cause them to die. If that idiot that's a CEO still stands in there for the next few years, they're right now on a dying trend of design and of progress. They, they want to basically put 2 million more riders on motorcycles, a butt on it for every bike that they build. And yet they don't even build a bike for every butt. They're stuck in a stupid design trend that is old, outdated, and not forward facing. I mean, they're, they're literally stuck in their past, which that's what they literally always, always market is that we are the retro motorcycle builder. We are this, we are, we are this generation of bikers, but they're trying to reach a younger generation. They're trying to reach new riders and they're really going about it truly the wrong way. I mean, we start with the street 750 street 500 and you, you look at these motorcycles and are they bad? In general, no. I owned one. I liked it all right. But it's not even put together as well as their other motorcycles. It's They, they intentionally did make it cheaper, but they call themselves a premium, a premium brand. That's what the CEO always says. We're a premium brand. No, no, no. Harley, that was not your focus. Your focus was literally blue-collar workers. You were the blue-collar hero, and now you're the white-collar moron. I'm sorry, you're not catering to the right group anymore. By calling yourself premium and not making a premium product, you are doing it wrong. So when you start with the street and you're trying to tell these people that this is a premium motorcycle, this is our entry level premium bike, you've done it wrong. The, the bike does not have as good a fit, a fit, or fit and finish as their others for sure. It is not a symmetrical design. It has issues with the way it's designed because you guys literally tried so hard to make it look like your other bikes when it is not like any of your other bikes. It is a bike that does need a standalone. It's a bike that needs to be in a different category. If you want a beginner bike that's going to be a good looking bike, there's ways to do it, but trying to make it look like something that it's not is not going to help you get anywhere. From putting, from putting the exhaust too far out on the right side for any short rider to ride it, and you're trying to market it to that side, that's not going to work. You're going to burn your leg on it. It's improperly engineered. It's terrible. It causes the exhaust to be in a position that if you turn to the right, you're immediately going to scrape on your exhaust, and you're not going to get the performance that you want out of it. It's an urban brawler. You can't go urban brawling if you can't turn right. So <laughs> you got to look at it that way, Harley. You didn't do that right at all. And then you, of course, priced them way up there. Why... Why do these bikes still cost $8,000 or even down into the 6,500, 7,500 range? That's a problem for beginning motorcycle riders. I know that you look at it and go, well, there's a lot of motorcycles that are out there. Well, the thing is like the FZ07, which is in the same price range, outperforms you in every way. It's a more comfortable bike. Well, now MT07, excuse me, but it's a, it's a proper bike. It runs well. It's comfortable. It can do everything just like what your street's supposed to do, but it does it better in every way, more powerful, faster, 
easy to handle and it's something you can grow into over time and never have a problem with it because it's always going to be something you can build just like your street's supposed to be but you don't even support the dumb thing you walk into a dealer and the dealer doesn't support the dumb thing you walk in there and you say i want a street the dealers are going to immediately laugh at you and say look at a sportster so how are you supposed to sell the stupid bike if you're being told don't sell the bike or don't buy the bike you got to tell your dealers to believe in your product and they simply don't so that's the problem with the street it's an orphan you don't care about it because you're not giving it the aftermarket support you're not helping it by letting the dealers just tell people to walk away from it and you're not helping it by pricing it out of the other motorcycles range because the f mt07 some of the others that are out there the kawasaki 650z and some of these other that are going to outperform it cost less they look better they perform better and they're simply going to last longer it's stupid and honestly honestly if you're going to downsize the revolution engine out of the night rod make sure it keeps the dual cams make sure it keeps the four valves per cylinder make sure it keeps all of that when you didn't you didn't half the engine size you didn't make it the same engine it's a different engine even though i like the way the engine performs it's got good power in most ranges especially in the 750 form you still messed it up you still didn't get it to where it needed to be and if you could have gone a little bit further and tried a little bit more it would have been fine and of course you said well what about the street rod it's got 10 percent more power 10 percent is nothing and then you got a bike that's asymmetrically incorrect you have to sit here and kind of have your legs out in weird positions you riding half sideways it's not properly designed yes it can turn very well it's the best handling harley there is it's a fun bike to ride but over the long haul, you're going to realize that your hips aren't aligned, your foot sticking out farther on one side than it is the other. You're literally sitting on the exhaust because you couldn't route it correctly to where it come up out the back of the bike or somewhere that was out of the way. Nope, you stuck it out just like the other one and you designed it wrong. And the price point is wrong again. A $9,000 bike basically, especially after the dealer's tack on everything, which that's a problem too, really. You price everything on your website. I appreciate that, Harley. It says destination. It says freight. It says everything. But then your dealers just take that and bump it up a couple of thousand dollars and tell us it's the way that it is because it's a Harley. So once again, like I said, work on your dealers. Work on your street. If you wanted to do something with the street, retune that little V-twin. Take your 500 and move it into a different market. Don't even have a 500 Cruiser. I know you want your training bike for your thing that replaces the old um, Buell Blast. That was a great little motorcycle. I know you want that. But that's not what the Street 500 is. It is, it's powerful enough, but not great. So why don't you retune it, give it lower end grunt, a little bit less horsepower, and package it in your first adventure bike in who knows how long, if ever. And then make the price $5,400 an approachable beginning bike. You want to put butts on bikes? Well, you have to have the bike to put the butt on in the first place. When you're looking at your market, all you do is cruiser, cruiser, cruiser. Your mark, your your freaking you know, whole entire lineup is as diverse as a KKK rally. It's all cruiser. Nobody freaking cares if all you can get is a cruiser. When they go to Kawasaki, they're going to walk in there. They're going to get a dirt bike from when they're a kid. They're going to get a dual sport when they get older. They're going to get a miniature adventure bike. They're going to get a large, powerful cruiser. They're going to get a large, powerful sport bike. They're going to grow with an entire brand because they can. You can't do that with you. Harley, you simply miss the market when it comes to the very beginning. If you want it, make it. Make a 250. Don't be afraid of it. If you want to approach millennials or Generation Z or anybody that's going to come after, make something affordable. Because let's face it, there's two things that are growing in this world right now. Bikes with less than 500 cc's and adventure bikes. Those are the two segments that are absolutely on fire right now while everything else is dead in this market. I understand that the market is a little bit tumultuous across everybody. Yamaha suffering, everybody suffering. But... The ones that are rising have the diversity that you simply don't. So make the 250. Make the 500 into an adventure bike. Don't even care. And I mean, and don't do something stupid like let's make a dirt bike and call it the, the dirt bob or the, or the dirt glide or something stupid like that because you can't get your naming right. But do something 
that makes sense for us. If you want to approach us, make the bike instead of making whatever the heck you think is going to work. Because I know where your cells are. Your cells are baggers. Your cells are dressers. But when it comes down to it, that's the tail end of the baby boomers. Those are the baby boomers born in the early part of the 60s that are going to be approaching the end of their riding life as well very soon. You have nothing in Generation X. You definitely have nothing in Millennial. And you have nothing in Z because they could care less. They could eat Tide Pods and love it. I don't care. That's how they feel. So, that whole thing, 2 million new riders in 10 years by making 100 new motorcycles. And the reason I'm starting that now is because we're going to talk about the Sportster next. The Sportster is a great bike. It started in 1957. It's still being made today with very little changes. The only changes that came around, literally 1986, the Evo shows up. 1992, I think it was, the 1200 and the 883, and so the 1100, 883. And then we get up to 2007, or 2004, if we want to throw that in there, where they rubber mount the Evo engine finally, so it doesn't rattle your feelings out, or make your kids come out shaking whenever they're birthed, or the 2007 mark where they actually um, fuel injected the bike finally. But that's the thing, it's always been behind. Maybe in the very late part of the 80s when the Evo first came out for it, it was fine. But the thing is, you're building all these new Sportsters. You're building this, the, the Sportster Evolution, the, the new 48 Special, and the 1200 Iron. I don't care. All you did was take every part out of the bin that was from the other bikes, throw it into a frame, Made the iron worse because the iron is great with drag bars. No, you put mini apes on it. Bullet cow's cool, but 1970s graphics? Harley, 1970s was not very good for you. Did you forget that in your past? The AMF owned you at that time? This was at the point where the iron engine, or the iron head engine, was needing a rebuild every 300 miles and the shovel head was losing oil every two? This is the time where Harley Davidson was being beaten to death by the Japanese manufacturers. You were on your last leg. You were going straight to bankruptcy. And you're going to put those graphics on these bikes because it's retro and cool. You are foolish. You're going right back to exactly what was causing your problem in the first place. You were going for an engine that is 30 years old and calling it modern power. Just like in the 70s when the iron head from the 50s was still being used in your Sportster and the shovel head from the 60s was still being used in your main line. That is not modern power. That is the same stupid engine we've seen since 1986. It is not modern. It is not powerful. It is nothing. It is stupid to call it that. You need to rework your Sportster. It's 61 years old and it shows. Jumping the shark is that thing they say whenever you do something in, in TV and that's when the series goes downhill from there. You jumped the shark with the Sportster back in 04. You didn't even need to start or the, the whole thing. You didn't need to do fuel injection. You needed to end it and retool it at that time instead of just carrying on with the same bike. Is it a good bike to start on? Yeah, it's an all right bike to start on. It's an okay bike for some things, but it's no longer relevant in a sea of purely modern motorcycles. Triumph with their Bonneville line, the modern Bonneville line, the 1200 engine that's in it, the 900 engine in the Street Cup, and all the other bikes that they're making are beautiful. R9T from BMW, that's in the same range. The Indian Scout. These bikes are all much more modern. They're more powerful. They look retro, but they work because they harken back to good times. And you're going back to the 70s? Don't, don't even try, Harley. That was the dumbest thing. And you're calling those new models. New. Two, two, more, two more models to add to the other ones that you've done. And that's, that's the other thing that blows my mind. You're saying 100 motorcycles. You're doing 100 new pieces of, of parts, bin, 
engineering. You can't do that. That's not what we're looking for. Your parts bin is literally in every store, in every catalog, and every bike that we see. We don't want a parts bin engineered motorcycle called new. It's stupid. Make the Sportster new. Modernize the engine. Do something. Bring the revolution back. You can take the 1250 revolution and rebuild it. If it's not EPA certified, is that's why you, if that's why you got rid of it, figure out a way to make it compliant. So that way it can come back. That would make a fine Sportster engine. It has the power. It has just as much power as some of the monster variants. It has just as much power as some other bikes. And if you put it in a frame that's fun, we'll ride it. Especially if the price stays under 10 grand. We'd love it. Engineer it. Do it right. Or figure out a way to make something new that's air cooled that's still cheaper and throw it in there. But wait, Indian does have a liquid cooled engine and it works. 1130 cc's outruns your Sportster, no matter which model, all day long, unless it's not stock. I had the non stock Sportster, I understand, but it still wasn't modern. It still vibrated to death. It still did everything. It still didn't work as well as the Indian in the long run. So you have all these people to look at and you're going to call that piece of junk modern. Don't get me wrong. This Sportster has been around. You can keep the name, but trash the frame. Then, as we've been told, we got rid of the Dyna, which that's okay. A lot of people need to understand something about the Dyna. It didn't sell. And that's the biggest thing that most people need to see. Yeah, they see Dynas running around, but in, in the grand scheme of everything, you either sold a Sportster or you sold a Softail, and the Dyna was just kind of the orphan in the middle. And that the big thing about the Dyna was it was so expensive that you might as well get the Softail with more stuff, or it was not, it was just out of range of the people that had to get the Sportster. So it stayed in this weird medium of I can't exist. So they trashed it. That's fine. That frame was old. In fact, to make the Dyna, they cut a better frame called the FX platform down and made the Dyna, which is to cheapen things because they had a better frame. The FXR was a fantastic frame. If you ever rode one, it was the best handling Harley up until the street 750 rod, whatever you want to call the dumb thing. I don't want to call it the street rod because the real street rod was VRSCA platform not not the trash that they're trying to call it now so that's the whole thing you guys cut up a frame you went from three point mount to two point mount and all this other stuff we can go into the whole thing about the dyna but you literally made an orphan bike so that leads us to the all new soft tail and this is where you guys really don't make sense a fourteen thousand dollar starting price on the street bob which has a little digital gauge, mini apes, mid mount controls, Milwaukee eight engine. And you have to adjust the shock by going under the seat and turning a screw. whoop de doo But why the heck is the breakout, which only literal difference is a fat tire, $21,000. How does that make sense? You did nothing else, but put a fatter tire on it and said, we can charge $21,000 for this bike. Why did you price yourself out of our range? Once again, I said, you guys started as the blue collar heroes. And now all you want is doctors, lawyers, and people who are going to not appreciate your motorcycle. They're going to park it in their garage next to their other bike, next to their other bike. And then let your motorcycle market sink by selling these things all, but with no miles on them. Because they have the money to do it. And they want a status symbol, but they're not going to ride it. So you're killing your own market. Give these bikes to people who want to ride. Make the soft tail line end at 15 grand, not 21 for something so stupid. And the fact is that you did this too. You took away cruise control. You took away options that were on the other bike that was cheaper than the one you made now. That is really stupid, dumb. Why? $15,000, that's it. And to be honest, that's only one new model. You can't say that the Street Bob, the Lowrider, the Slim S, the Heritage, the Breakout, and the Fat Bob, and the Fat Boy are all different models. Plus add a new model because of the 114 engine. No, I'm sorry. That's one frame with one different rear section a piece from them. Not all new motorcycles. 
I'm sorry. So you haven't released all these bikes as you claimed. You've released five-ish, maybe, possibly, not even that. And you want to release 110 years. Stop parts bins. Stop it now. You might scale back, to be honest, your soft tail line. Because, to be honest, the Street Bob and the Lowrider are pretty much the same bike. Buckhorn versus Mini Ape, but they're both mid-mount. Who freaking cares? Scrap the Street Bob, keep the Lowrider. It's got the better name anyway and the better credit. Get rid of the Soft Tail Slim S. It's the same stupid bike as the Breakout. Keep If you want to keep them, or even the Fat Boy. Don't keep these other bikes just because one has floorboards versus pegs. One has forward mount versus mid. Make just a few. So keep basically and make sure that you do this so that way you maybe get some better cost out of this. Keep the low rider, keep the fat bob because that is actually probably the best looking motorcycle you've made in a long time. It's aggressive, it's different, it's actually out of the ballpark and that is fresh. You finally did something right, congratulations. That's the only time I will say that right now. So keep that one and keep the heritage. You need the one with bags. Screw that stupid sport glide. That is the dumbest thing you ever did. I didn't know you could, I did not know that you could actually design a Yamaha Raider. Congratulations, you, you did a great job of redesigning the Yamaha Raider and making it a little bit less modern. You did a great job. Just why does that even exist? It's the ugliest thing that I've ever seen and you're charging literally Road King prices for it. I'm sorry, everybody's gonna get the Road King still or the Heritage. But the, why does the Heritage cost as much as the Road King anyway? That doesn't even make sense either, but we won't go into that. So we get to the Touring line, and you guys are saying, oh, these are new motorcycles too. We redid the CVOs. That's a new engine. That's not a new model. Try again. Oh, well, we redid the Specials. You lengthened the badge and you painted them black instead of chrome. Also, not a new model. That, that was stupid. And to black everything out, which is cheaper than chrome, you made the prices more expensive. Because Harley. Cut your prices of the touring bikes that are regular to about 24 out the door. And that way everybody can get them. Instead of going way above that, get back to where the market is. Your CVOs can stay in the top end. That's fine. So that's where we stand right now in terms of Harley Davidson and some of their models and some of the changes and stuff like that. But the rants that I can have about the dealerships are endless. Seriously. When we walk into a dealership, we want something special. We want to be part of the community that the dealerships are. But the problem is, is that back in the first part of the crashing of 08, 09 and stuff, you guys wanted to make everything all inclusive. You wanted motor clothes and everything to be displayed in a certain way and told everybody that they had to have a special showroom at this much square footage with this much footage to motor clothes and parts and service and this. And what you effectively did was remove yourself from the community because you took away mom and pop's job. You went to corporate stores and corporations do not care about us. All they want us to do is buy the motorcycle and they don't want to relate to us. All they want to do is throw the party in hopes that we buy a motorcycle, but they don't care. When you go there, you don't talk to anybody in the dealer for the most part. You want to stay away from them because all they're trying to do is sell, 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 sell. But it's not just that. It's the fact that you go into a Harley Davidson dealership and you feel assaulted. You get ran up on by a whole bunch of people like, hey, what's going on, man? It's nice to meet you and all this stuff. feels like you're walking into a used car dealer and you need to take the same shower you do when you leave one of those lots. You feel dirty. And that's not how it's supposed to be. For many of the motorcycle shops that are around Oklahoma City, for gratefully the most part, they're still mostly mom and pop. When I'm talking about House of Kawasaki, Oklahoma Honda Suzuki, and some of these others that are around here. You walk in there and you can have a general conversation with the salesman and not feel selled. In fact, you're going to you're going to actually get a idea of everything that they like because you're going to talk about other bikes. I mean, we go to Oklahoma Honda Suzuki to talk about a Triumph Daytona. Who they don't even sell those, but the guy rides one, he loves it. But he loves everything about motorcycles. And the whole thing is you have a relationship and you build a friendship and you build a rapport and you like the person. You walk into a Harley dealership and these guys 
actually most of the time don't know how to ride, to be honest. If they do ride, they can't afford the Harley that they're selling because you don't pay them enough. Well, the corporation doesn't. And quite frankly, they're just there to try to make money because everybody's been told that in the motorcycle market, Harley has the money. Not so much anymore. You guys really have lost it because you took away mom and pop. You've got to get your dealer network in check where they're treating everybody respectfully every day. I'm not going to walk into a situation like the one dealership I worked with that literally added $3,200 to the price of a bike with fake product. And many of them do this and it's sickening. When we had to present numbers, they literally had the number over here plus Simon eyes plus this and it, and it was, something they could not get rid of. They said they can adjust it out of it, but they never did. It was expensive and it was stupid and it was predatory and you're not keeping an eye on them, period. You're letting it happen. And it takes us away from those dealerships. It takes us away from seeing them as a place to hang out and chill. The hog groups are starting to disband even. They're getting tired of it. Please look at your dealer network and try. But if you want to innovate, there's still ways. Us millennials do ride motorcycles. In fact, a bunch of my friends that you'll be meeting here pretty soon on this channel are all the same age as I am. We're all from the 80s or early 90s and we ride. And that's the whole thing. Many of them go out and buy a used bike. Many of them buy the smaller displacement bikes because they can afford them. What you've done is priced yourself out of us. And that's why we're not buying. And that, and you've also not innovated enough. The Milwaukee 8's a great engine. It's good power. It's still 1930s technology. It's old, dilapidated, and time to build something new. Face it, Harley, you've got to get out of the past to reach. Is the live wire the idea? I know you guys want to build the electric bike. I don't know. Victory did a great job with it. Look where they are now. Think about that, Harley. They're dead. Where are you next on the line? You've got to think beyond motor clothes and parts, accessories and everything. You've got to look back at your product. You cannot keep trying to sell us a lifestyle, sell us a bike. And that was the one thing I learned at the dealerships. We sell a lifestyle, not a motorcycle. I'm sorry. You sell a motorcycle. We build our lifestyle. That's what millennials do. We don't want to be chained down to a certain lifestyle. We want to build our own. And your lifestyle is too old. It's stereotypical and it's dead. So if you guys have any other thoughts or anything that you want to discuss about Harley Davidson, leave them in the comments below. I know that there's going to be some screaming and shouting, but please keep it civil. At any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog. Catch you on the shiny side.